Let's talk inflammation. The removal of third molars is inevitably going to cause pain, trismus, and post-operative swelling. Well, you know, not if I do it, right? And of course, this all depends on flap design, bone removal, surgical trauma, and periosteal displacement. Did you respect the periosteum? Post-operative swelling and inflammation is a fact of life, and it is our job to reduce this. I feel that patients can ice their face as much as humanly possible, and I think it makes them feel a lot better, and the cold soothes their face, and we are almost intrinsically trained by this point to ice anything that swells. But multiple studies have shown that for third molars, it doesn't do as much as we think it does. I prefer to use corticosteroids as part of my pharmacological protocol to help with post-operative swelling and inflammation, and namely dexamethasone. But why is there no clear-cut guidelines about dosages? So many studies, all with different answers, but they all agree corticosteroids do make a significant difference. So here's what I do. Dexamethasone can be administered in different ways and it all works. You can inject four milligrams around each surgical site. You could administer it orally on the day of surgery in four milligram tablets, BID for two days, or you can do what I do. When providing IV sedation, I administer eight milligrams slowly prior to providing any sedative drugs. But why? I don't know how else to say this, but IV dexamethasone given in a bolus can cause, well, itchy crotch. It can cause itchy crotch. And this can happen more in females than males. And I don't want any half sedated patients to go blaming their dentist for, well, you know what I'm getting at here. Just watch out for that. A couple other things about dexamethasone you must know is that it can mess with your patient's circadian rhythms and can keep them up at night. So I always tell them not to take it right before bed. It's also important to note that the half-life of dexamethasone is between 36 and 54 hours. So it stays in your patient's system for quite a while, providing all that anti-inflammatory goodness. Lastly, don't make the same mistakes that I have and don't give dexamethasone to a diabetic. Their blood sugar will go through the roof and well, you just look dumb. My bad, I've been there. Don't make my mistakes. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. We'll see you next time.